Hello, Joe McGrew here. We're going to try to run through some stuff today and see if we can't alleviate uh, a little bit of the mystery of starting up your CNC, <clears throat> whether you're new or old at it. And I've uh, been asked a lot of questions on the phone, try to answer as many as I can. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do this in a series of three videos so we don't uh, bore you to death. Um, when I come in in the morning, I turn on my computer, I turn on my machine. Uh, I'm probably a little guilty of leaving them on overnight, but uh, that's not always a good idea. But uh, if you come in and uh, you turn on your computer, turn on your machine, uh, your Z is out over the table somewhere from the night before or the day before or wherever it was, and uh, you've got to get started. So the first thing I do is uh, come in and, in my case, I use a little thing called a uh, Logitech rumble pad which is a game controller I don't think they make it anymore but you can still get them on eBay um, the beauty of this particular uh, rumble pad is it will allow you to assign keys to the buttons and what that means is that uh, um, I can uh, assign a key for uh, arrow down arrow uh, arrow left arrow down arrow right arrow up and then uh, my space key and page up key for running my Z up and down, the same as on your keyboard. Uh, this will come in handy uh, a little bit later for me. Um, uh, with my Logitech, I call up my WinCNC software, and uh, like I say, I'm, it's first day, first thing in the morning, and um, your screen is usually clear. Uh, at this point, most of us would just simply go in and attempt to home the machine, but if you look, it's going to go in and test the high Z, and then it's going to come across and try to test the low Z. However, this is going to take all day long because it's all the way across the machine. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> at this point is uh, tell it to uh, um, go home. And I'm going to bring it down to low X and low Y to uh, save some time. And once I get it down in the lower left-hand corner, I'm going to then hit the home key or initialize key as uh, it's known to many with the newer software. Again, my machine is uh, several years old now and uh, you know, still holding up for the test of time. But I'm gonna hit home and uh, let's see if I can't move the uh, camera a little bit so you can see a little more what's going on out there. Um, it went up and it tested the high Z limits to the limit switch and it came down to the limit, that, the amount that it was set at. Now it's gone off to test the low X it's going to go back and touch off on that switch. It's going to come back and then it's going to come down and test the low Y switch. Once it's done that, it's established what we know as machine home. This is a position that's created in your software. It's the same every time you run home. Uh, it's based on where the limit switches are, not where the machine is, not where the material is, but where the limit switches are. It's the absolute home. Um, for me, I have gone into the uh, settings command uh, and opened up home positions and I have created uh, H1 as machine home and I have uh, get position to save that position. Uh, someone may know why I do that. I don't know why I do that, but I do. Um, now, uh, again, this is about setting up your machine during the day. Uh, at this point, I'm going to uh, move the, the bit out over to, or a bit, the bit I'm gonna run for the day out over the uh, table and uh, I'm going to get my trusty Z-pad, which you'll notice is tied to a cord. <coughs> and uh, in this case, that Z-pad is a half inch thick. Uh, there are reasons it is set at a half inch thick. These settings may vary. Uh, mine is uh, set at a half inch thick, yet um, you, you'll see later why some of those settings are changed for me. I'm going to put it on my spoil board using the bit that I'm going to run for the file that I intend to run next and I'm going to hit measure to a warning, which in the case of the uh, stinger may have a different name for that button, but the uh, procedure and idea and theory are the same. The process may be different. Uh, it's going to come down and it's going to touch, you'll see right here, it's going to touch that pad and it's going to go all the way back up to the high Z uh, save position. Um, at that point, um, I've uh, you know, set my what we call low limit Z, which is where is, is going to prevent how deep that bit will cut into that material before it will say, I've gone too far. Where this will come in handy is if I've accidentally told uh, 
my file that uh, my material was uh, three quarters of an inch thick and in reality it was a half inch thick, well then what's going to happen is it knows where that spoil board is no matter where that Z is set and it's going to go down and when it enters that spoil board it's going to say whoops I've gone too far and it's going to stop and it's going to save me bits and it's going to save my spoil board. Um, at this point uh, we're in initial setup during the day. Uh, if you've got a spindle it's a good idea to uh, turn it on and let it run at five to 7,000 RPMs or if you've got a warm-up spindle command or uh, uh, in my case, I would simply enter M3, which is a machine command for turn the spindle on, uh, let it run about uh, um, five to 7,000 RPMs for five to seven minutes. They're ceramic bearings. Uh, when it's extremely cold, it's probably a very good idea to do this. Uh, it's not uh, grease bearings like are in these uh, routers on the side here. You'll see that I have routers and I have a spindle. Um, and uh, at that point, uh, I have set my machine up and I'm prepared to run for the day. Uh, if I've used the M3 command to turn the spindle on, I simply use M5 to turn it off. Um, I'm going to do these in a series of videos and uh, I'll be back in a minute and we'll see about how to run a file.